Tesla's 7.0 firmware update, slingshotting around town, and a new low-cost, multi-material 3D printer from MIT. I'm Emma B, and welcome to Geek Beat. Tesla Model S drivers are about to be doing a lot less actual driving when auto steering and parking assist upgrades show up in the new 7.0 firmware that's preparing to be released. Models with the hardware to support it will get an auto steering capability added to their cruise control, which will keep them in their lanes all day on well-marked roads. Activating a turn signal will initiate a computer-controlled lane change, and when you arrive at your destination, auto parking is an option when parallel parking is required. My favorite new feature though, when you're on private property, your Tesla can pull out of the garage and come meet you at the curb. There's also a new user interface coming with a cleaner look and feel, along with additional widgets and a dashboard view, which includes a little Model S picture in the center with real-time vehicles and other objects around the car. So basically, driving a Tesla is going to be a whole lot like piloting a fighter jet once the new firmware kicks in. And speaking of fighter jets, holy crap, have you seen the new Polaris slingshot? Basically, some Polaris designer got drunk while he was watching Batman and decided to build a three-wheeled motorcycle for Bruce Wayne. The slingshot is what came out of his head. The super cool ride weighs in at around 1,700 pounds, but has a GM-built 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder engine, mated to a five-speed manual transmission, and not much else. The motor puts in 173 horsepower, which is enough to push the slingshot zero to 60 miles an hour in a little under six seconds, and eventually top out at a speed of 130 miles per hour, if you break that. The slingshot looks like a X-wing had sex with a Testarossa and then got in a rear end collision, which is exactly why you might want one. It may not be the fastest thing on the road or the most comfortable, but you're definitely going to get all the attention. And the best part is you can pick one up for around 20 grand. We've got links and videos for the show notes at geekbeat.tv forward slash 1096. 3D printers aren't exactly the Star Trek replicators that we'd hoped for, but at least not yet. The new multi-material printer developed by MIT can spit out up to 10 different materials in one single print job. Now, by comparison, some commercial multi-material printers already exist, but at over $250,000 each, they aren't exactly affordable. The MIT printer, on the other hand, was built for around 7,700. So a commercialized version would probably come at a less than 10% of the price of the existing systems. Now, you might not think you'd want to spend 10 to $15,000 on a 3D printer, but as they get more sophisticated and they can lay down plastic, metal, glass, fabric, and other materials, eventually you won't even have to go to the store to order products. You'll just go buy the plans and print some of your own. And by that time, the prices will have dropped significantly and performance will improve dramatically. So eventually, our 3D printers will print more 3D printers. But personally, I'm just waiting for the kitchen version that lets me print a five course meal. Although I think John P is waiting for the, the one custom McDonald's version that prints Big Macs and chicken nuggets at home. Well, that's it for today's episode. Remember to subscribe, share, and support the show. Head on over to geekbeat.tv forward slash Patreon and show your support. But I mean, not until after you give me a thumbs up or a like or whatever. And also spread this episode around the interweb and stuff because I'm Emma B. Thanks for watching.